Hello, Scotty here. Um, my wife and I just came back from Galveston. We went down for the American Beekeeping Federation Conference. And while we were down there, I had the pleasure of meeting some beekeepers from, I hope I pronounce this right, Brazoria uh, County Beekeepers Association. Uh, some nice people. We went to one of their meetings and we got invited out to their queen rearing yard. And we had a real good time. Uh, managed to get myself stung, which is great, and keep my venom level up so my bees won't bother me in the spring. Good fun. <laughs> um, while we were there, we talked, I mean, it was very interesting to me to see how they keep their bees. And we talked a little bit about uh, keeping bees in the cold. Uh, one of the things I had mentioned them to, to them was uh, these cover cloths that I use, and they had never really heard of them, or just a couple guys I talked to hadn't heard of them. And uh, I was telling them about, uh, you know, it keeps the bees quiet, and I was explaining all the good things about it. Um, so I thought I'd do a little video on how to make these, and actually I intend to send a couple of these down to those guys so they can have a look at them, and if they're interested, maybe they can make them. But basically what it is, it's a piece of vinyl or vinylette, and it, uh, you know, this is just a honey super, I'm just using it as an example. But you know, you, you can, when you open up your hive and the bees start coming up and the bees are flying around, uh, everybody has a different opinion on this, but in my opinion, uh, it's not good. Um, the sun and the wind are on the bees, which is stressing the bees. I feel stress leads to disease problems. Um, if you're in a dearth, you've got issues with other bees coming and robbing them. Um, causes lots of problems. So the whole idea, and I've just got this propped up you can see, the whole idea is you just, you cover it. Now if you've got a few boxes split, and I'll maybe show that in a second here, um, you can cover them. These bees, they just keep on doing what they're doing. They're working the comb, they're doing whatever. Uh, they don't have issues with the sun and the wind. They don't have issues with other bees coming and robbing them. And then the idea with these things is you would just roll them up a little bit and then you can and this one's going to slide because I got the box on an angle, but it would it would stay, and then you can you know we're, then I have a quiet box. I'm not a fan of sitting these behind. I, I put these in a quiet box, but just pretend that's in a quiet box. And and then you know you would roll this a little bit more, and then you can get the next frame out. Now some guys will actually start with another one. I don't do this. They would put another one here. You got those covered, and as you pull these out, you're rolling it across. It's too too tedious, but. Real handy little things. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I go about making these. Um, a lot of different ways I'm sure you could accomplish the same thing. But the trick is, is the material. Uh, this is one that I had bought. Uh, it's nice. It's got the vinyl on both sides. But in, in a little bit cooler weather, I find this one uh, doesn't roll very nice. And also, this one, I've never taken it apart, but it appears just to be a piece of wood in there. And I find on a breezy day that quite often these will just blow off. So I have vinyl, uh, if you're from the north, um, very similar to a snow machine seat material. It's kind of a cloth, a woven cloth on one side and vinyl on the other side. Um, those of you who don't know snow machines or seen a snow machine, motorcycle seat. Um, it's a little bit heavier than the one that I bought, but it does seem to be a bit more flexible. And then I, I sew a little pocket and then I put a piece of uh, quarter inch rod. I buy this in long lengths, but I mean, if you go to the tractor store or any good hardware store, you can buy this in four foot lengths. Uh, I'll give you all the dimensions shortly. So all I do, get rid of this, is uh, you want to, you want to be able to, so you want to be able to cover the hive. The rod wants to run parallel with your frames. So, you know, this box is, these ones are 20 inches. Um, the way my fabric worked out, I ended up making mine 21, so it's got a bit more coverage. Then the other way on the box is, what is that, 16 and a half. Again, it's just the way my fabric worked out. I think I cut those 24 by 21, and that 24 gives you enough room to create this pop. So yeah, you want it, you want it with the rods to be parallel to your frame so you can roll them up. I seen somebody make them this way one time and it rolled the wrong way. Well, that's not gonna, that isn't gonna work. You know, you're covering the frames that way. It has to cover the frames this way. So, the piece, you see it was folded, it doesn't want to lay flat. So the pieces that I made, and you can vary this a little bit, obviously. I made mine 21 by 24. The 21 covers the, the six, or, well, the 20 inch, so it hangs over a little bit. Then what you want to do is you want to fold this over and create a little pocket. 
Now, I'm no seamstress, and I don't pretend to be. Um, my wife has helped me with this once before, and you, you put in the pins and needles and whatnot, and I always end up poking myself, and then I get them caught in the sewing machine. So what I do is I just fold this so that it's even. I got about a, I guess I got about an inch and a half coverage there, uh, overlap. And like, because I made this 24, I got lots. If you make it a little less, well, then maybe you've got to get a little more precise with your seams here. But an uh, inch and a half, and <laughs> if you're working on your wife's dining room table, don't do this. But I just throw a couple staples in there to keep it nice, nice. Then I just take some tuck tape and I, I overlap this, this seam by, oh, three eighths. Not a lot, just, just a little bit. Show you in a second. Cross, that holds it down. Take my scissors, cut that off, and then I always try and fold that a little bit so next time you want to get it. And then I pop the staples. The staples were just there to, to keep it straight while I'm trying to, uh, to get the tape on. Okay, like I say, if you're working on the wife's dining room table, don't do that. Then, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the one end and then sew down the length and I'm going to create a pocket to put these pieces of quarter inch rod in and then uh, I'll sew the other end. So let me move the camera, set up. All right, so we got our, our seam tape down. So then you just go to your machine. Now, my wife has, you do need a machine that's uh, heavy enough to go through two layers of this. My wife has a much fancier machine in the house, but unfortunately we learned quite quickly that it, uh, it wasn't capable of, of doing the two materials. So I actually found an old used machine, but uh, it works quite well. So uh, obviously if you're a better seamstress than I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but basically you slide the material in underneath that little foot, put the foot down. My wife always tells me I have to start it by hand, get the needle down into the fabric before you push the little lever to go and help it get started. And then uh, away you go. The, the whole idea is to keep it straight and to leave enough of a pocket there to put that piece of quarter inch rod in. When you get to the end, you stop, raise the foot, give the piece of work a quarter turn, and I just kind of pull it out a little wee bit, uh, put that back down, and then you have to go to reverse and forward a couple times here, but come forward a little bit, then go reverse a little bit, and then I come back a little bit forward, raise the needle up, pull that out, and I have learned that you have to pull out a good five or six inches of thread, or if you cut it, you lose your both ends, and then you got to re-thread that stupid needle. So we snip that off. Then we do is we just take the tape off. And we take one of our rods, and I think I forgot to mention earlier, I cut these 19 inches. Um, slide it in the end that you haven't sewn yet. And then I just kind of jiggle it so it goes down. And you can feel it. You want to make sure you don't hit the, uh, the rod with that needle or bad stuff happens. So we just put that underneath. Put the foot down again, start it manually, come a little bit, and reverse, and then raise the needle up, pull that out, cut off all the excess. I'm sure if you're better at this than I am, you won't have all that, but that's that. So now I'll just fold the other side and sew that, and then uh, I'll show you how I use these things. So stick around. All right, so I've got the, the second seam sewn up and I thought I would just give you a quick demonstration of how I use these. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier in this video or another video about my quiet box. I'm gonna show you how I use that as well. Obviously there's no bees in here. This is just some boxes with some frames. The quiet box is really just a four frame nuke box that I put, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I put some, some number eight hardware cloth on the bottom and I built it so that it's about, uh, oh, it's an extra inch or so deeper. Reason for that is, you know, if you're doing a, a hive inspection, you come across a frame that's got a nice big queen cell on the bottom, you could put that in here without damaging it until you decide what you're gonna do, whether or not, you know, the hive's already swarmed and you need to leave it there, or whether they're just preparing to swarm and you wanna make a nuke. But it gives you a place to save that cell. Um, the quiet box also keeps the frames that you put in here with bees quiet, as the name implies. Um, keeps them out of the sun, out of the wind, and they're not getting robbed. Less stress for the bees, less stress for you. Um, again, lots of people have opinion on this, but I firmly believe that um, if your bees are under stress, they're more likely to have disease issues. 
just like us, stress causes disease. So anyway, that's, that's the main, main idea behind these cover class. Uh, okay, so this is, would just kind of represent a typical setup for me early season. Uh, I have two brood boxes and a, a honey super. I don't run queen excluders, I don't care for them. They have their uses, but I, I don't really care for them. Then I've got an inner cover, a ventilation box, and then there would be a roof on this. I just couldn't find one handy, so I'm not going to worry about it. When I'm working my colonies, I would typically take the roof off this and set it down behind me. That would give me a place to set the honey super. I would probably grab a roof off of a couple of other colonies and set them on the ground. Then the ventilation box, I would sit someplace very close to where I want to work, and I would turn it a quarter turn, and that's where I would actually put my... Uh, my quiet box. Oh, and this this cover, this was one of those cover cloths that I purchased and I really didn't care for, so I just attached it to my, my quiet box. I have some of this material left over, and I'm going to shoot a video. I'm going to make a couple new ones of these very shortly, actually, and uh, I'm going to use some of this material. But anyway, it works fine for that. So now, typically, if I'm going to work uh, a, a colony, this, this inner cover is going to be propylized down, and maybe I've got two or three honey supers. I actually wouldn't take it off. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't usually have a problem with the queen coming on top. And if I was doing a brood inspection, I want to find the queen, or I'm just checking brood for disease, um, I would typically leave this on, and that keeps these bees contained. But if, for whatever reason, you did take it off, um, then you can just simply put a cover cloth on. You take your hive tool, because of course this is going to be propylized, take this off, and then I would set it on top of uh, one of the roots that I have handy, or I would sit it on top of that inner cover, and then I would take, uh, I may not put the cover cloth on right away, I may take some additional honey supers and stack them, but whatever, get rid of that. Then I would very quickly take and put one of these covers on here. Now, you know, normally when you open your hive, there's going to be burr comb and propolis and stuff here, and, and the frames are all, uh, you know, they're, they're sealed down in place. These ones are loose, because it's just, they're in storage, but um, this would be an opportunity before I took that off, I would put a cover cloth on and maybe smoke that a little bit, give them a minute or two. And when you take that cover cloth off, you'd be amazed. The bees are gone. It gives you an opportunity to take your hive tool and, and scrape the top of these clean before you do anything else. But that, that's just another use for the, the cover cloth. It does, for, and it's not heavy enough to hurt the bees, but it does push them down out of your way. So I'd put a cover cloth. Now, another thing, if you're doing an inspection looking for a queen, I wouldn't leave it like this because you start pulling the, the frames out of this box looking for the queen, you can be guaranteed she's going to run down into the other box. And then when you put these frames back, she's going to come back up into this box when you're over there. So if I want to find the queen for whatever reason, I put the cover cloth on, I would crack this open, I would take this box off, and again I would set it onto another roof or something handy, and then I'd put a cover cloth on this one, do the same thing. A little bit of smoke perhaps, sometimes not. Depends on the day. If it's a nice, a nice sunny day and, and the bees are out working flowers, lots of times with the cover cloths, I don't even use a smoker. But I might give them a little smoke and I would take this off and scrape this and clean this. Now, when I'm going to start the actual inspection, I would, I would usually start with the bottom one, but you could start with that one. It doesn't really matter. I would just roll this back a little wee bit. I would pull this first frame out. <laughs> this was an experiment I was trying with uh, only using half a thing of plastic foundation. Uh, jury's out on that one yet. But anyway, this one would probably just be honey, but there's going to be bees on it. So I would put it in there, and I'd throw that on. Oh, okay, so here, before you even start this, now you've got three or four boxes and everything's covered. You've got flight bees returning that are kind of milling around a little bit because they can't figure out where the entrance, top entrance went. Um, but all the bees in these boxes are quiet. They're continuing to do their work within the colony, within reason, especially if you didn't smoke them too much. Um, they're not in the sun, they're not in the wind, they're not getting robbed by other colonies, so their stress level is down, which, like I say, I, I know people have their opinion on this, but I feel that reduces the likelihood of disease. But even if you don't believe that, that's fine. They're quiet, they're not getting stressed out, they're not going to be coming after you. You know, if you got them all exposed to the elements, they're not happy, and you're the reason they're not happy. You're going to be suited up. Most of the time in the summertime, I work with just a t-shirt on, maybe a veil from time to time. Um, and this, and I'm talking sometimes three deeps with three or four honey supers, big colonies. You keep everything covered up, it's amazing how much gentler your bees are. Anyway, so how I would do this now, I roll this back. I've taken the first frame out. I'll now take the second frame out. Again, it's probably honey, whatever. It's covered in bees. Gently, carefully, put that in there, cover that back up. I would do the same thing with the third one. You might be getting some brood now, but we're watching for mother and, and checking things out. 
Usually three is what I take out. There's room for a fourth. So at any point when you do find the queen, you can put her in there and she's safe. At this point, I would normally scrape and clean a little bit. Then I would take the next frame out, check it, put it there, and so on. And, and you know, at some, at some point, you're going to get back into frames of honey. You may or you may not remove them. If you didn't find the queen, you would, uh, you know, continue moving these over, scraping, cleaning, put them back. Then I would take these one at a time and put them back. And then I put the cover on. Now, we're going to go into this box to look for the queen. We're not going to take this box and put it back because you can be guaranteed she's going to run down. At this point, wherever I am, I might move the quiet box closer. I would then begin to roll this one back and go through these frames one at a time. If you don't find the queen there, I might look in the honey super real quick. But uh, more often than not, you just missed her. Um, but yeah, you can always check that. But you keep the boxes separate. Now, another real sweet thing with these cover cloths is when you go to put the colony back together. You know that if you don't have a cover cloth on here normally, bees are on the top bars, bees are on the sides. You try giving them a little smoke, maybe you try using your broom, however your technique is, and you want to put this box back. I mean, I, you, you can do it. You put it down real gentle, wiggle back and forth, all these different techniques. But these cover cloths are amazing. You have these on there. Even if you're not using smoke, but if definitely if you do use smoke, you lift this, puff a little bit of smoke under there, and then just wait a minute. You're, you get this one ready, you know, you know what you're doing, you know which way you're going to put it. You just take this and just flip it off and grab this. You can put this back on, and nine out of ten times there's no bees there. It's, it's quite fascinating how well that they work to keep the bees down. You know, there's always a few, but uh, they're real handy things. And then you do the same thing here when you're ready to put your honey supers back on whether you have a queen excluder or not. Um, a little bit of smoke, perhaps. Flip this off. If you've got a queen excluder, put it on. If not, you just simply grab your honey super and put it back on. And like I say, nine out of 10 times, the cover cloth will keep the bees out of the way. So I think, I think that's gonna wrap this one up. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Um, and as always, you, you be good to your bees and I'm certain they'll be good to you. Take care, bye-bye.